is AC Milwaukee operations in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, where AC Spark Plug Division of General Motors manufactures the catalytic converter. AC Milwaukee operations was built during our nation's space age, which began in the late 1950s and continued through the decade of the 60s. From the time that the USSR launched Sputnik in 1957 to the first moonwalk by Neil Armstrong and Ed Aldrin in 1969, these buildings were occupied by almost 8,000 scientists, engineers, and technicians engaged in missile guidance system development. As the race to the moon developed in the 50s and 60s, the air pollution problem in Los Angeles became increasingly apparent. General Motors accelerated its emissions control research program. Starting with cars sold in California during the 1961 model year, those sold nationwide since the 1963 model year, the positive crankcase ventilation valve, engine modification, air injection, retarded spark, and exhaust gas recirculation enabled GM to greatly reduce exhaust emissions from its production vehicles. General Motors also equipped a number of experimental cars with manifold reactors, electronic ignition systems, fuel injection, catalytic converters, and other engineering test devices and placed them in operation. By June of 1969, among all of the alternatives examined by General Motors Research Laboratory, the catalytic converter was identified as having the greatest potential for achieving the substantially lower emission levels then being proposed by the federal government. On December 9, 1969, General Motors President Edward N. Cole informed AC General Manager George Chestnut that AC Spark Plug Division would have the responsibility for the design, development, and manufacture of a catalytic converter for future GM vehicle applications. The objective of General Motors' catalytic converter development program was to meet anticipated federal automotive emissions requirements under the 1967 Federal Clean Air Act. Later in 1970, stringent automotive emissions requirements originally proposed for 1980 became law as part of an amendment to the Federal Clean Air Act. Standards originally established by the amendment for 1975 and 1976 models called for 90% reductions in hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and oxides of nitrogen as compared with pre-controlled cars. It's common knowledge that hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide emissions from automobiles had already peaked during 1967 and have been on the decline ever since. The other pollutants from automobile exhaust, oxides of nitrogen, began the downturn in 1972 and has also continued to decline. In the meantime, engineers at AC Spark Plug Division in Flint and at General Motors Research Laboratories in Warren were in the process of evaluating more than 1,500 catalyst formulations from about 80 of the best domestic and foreign chemical manufacturers. Considerable effort was also being directed to the task of designing a suitable container to hold the catalyst. The eventual decision to build the two underfloor models now produced at Oak Creek was reached after countless hours of research and development activity. Following the establishment of the so-called interim standards for automotive emissions in April of 1973, AC worked on a critical task schedule to prepare the plant complex at Oak Creek, Wisconsin, for the manufacture of catalytic converters. Nearly 376,000 square feet of new floor space was added, including a new press bay, connecting buildings, railroad siding, shipping and receiving areas, and a large addition to one of the manufacturing buildings, increased utility capacity, water treatment facilities, and parking facilities were also required. The division's commitment to the catalytic converter program could best be summarized in the words of its general manager, who said it has involved some of our people all of the time and all of our people some of the time. The catalytic converter is a durable, reliable automotive emissions after-treatment device with no moving parts. It's constructed mainly of 50,000 stainless steel to withstand heat generated during the oxidation and treatment of exhaust gases. Frank Buckley, who was appointed plant manager, AC Milwaukee Operations, just prior to the building and renovation program at Oak Creek, demonstrates how the catalyst formulation can be removed and replaced at an automobile dealership. The converter is a life-of-the-car component designed to last for 50,000 miles of driving. When the catalyst becomes coated with lead additives from excessive use of leaded gasoline, contrary to GM recommendation, 
A change out is required. The stainless steel converter container mounted in the exhaust system of every 1975 General Motors car is virtually indestructible and will not normally have to be replaced. The top and bottom layers of steel covering the catalyst bed are nearly identical. Each consists of a layer of aluminized steel called an insulation cover, a blanket of ceramic fiber insulation, a stainless steel carrier, and a stainless steel retainer, louver to permit the flow of exhaust gases through the catalyst bed. The catalyst itself can be either spherical or cylindrical in shape. Both types of substrate are constructed of alumina and coated with a platinum palladium catalyst. Few chemical elements have the type of catalytic activity required. These elements are generally in the middle of the periodic table of elements, and many of these are rare precious metals such as platinum and palladium. Current statutory emission level requirements and timetables necessitated using the most active and durable catalysts available. Platinum and palladium promoted catalysts are currently the most effective catalysts for emission control. It was determined through experimentation and testing that base metal catalyst formulations, such as copper and chrome, would be intolerant to contamination from sulfur found in petroleum. The characteristic requirement of high temperature operation inherent to base metal catalyst formulation was judged to be a significant problem as well. Base metal catalyst formulations do not reach peak operating efficiencies as quickly as those made from noble metals. Noble metals are also less sensitive to lead contamination. Because the alumina beads or pellets are extremely porous, the surface area covered by the platinum palladium catalyst in a typical 260 cubic inch catalytic converter would actually cover the equivalent of 59 football fields. The purpose of the catalyst is twofold. First, it's able to make a chemical reaction go faster, and second, although it enters into a chemical reaction, it emerges unchanged, able to repeat the process again. Mounted under the seat of the right front seat passenger, the catalytic converter outlets to the muffler and tailpipe in the conventional manner. In this schematic, exhaust gases enter at the inlet end of the catalytic converter, pass across the top of the catalyst bed, where a baffle directs the flow through the catalyst-coated beads. The treated gases emerge at the bottom of the catalyst bed and flow out through the exhaust pipe. Lead, phosphorus, and sulfur elements found in gasoline are all contaminants for a catalytic converter. It's essential that lead-free fuel, now available at most of our nation's retail gasoline stations, be used in 1975 model catalytic converter-equipped cars. The catalytic action of the AC underfloor oxidizing converter causes carbon monoxide, CO, to combine with oxygen to form harmless carbon dioxide. Unburned hydrocarbons, HC, combine with oxygen to form ordinary water vapor. The GM catalytic converter is constructed mainly of a special 50,000th thick chrome stainless steel nominally referred to as GM 6125M. It will take approximately 75,000 tons of this special chrome stainless steel to supply the annual production requirements of AC Milwaukee operations. This makes ACMO the largest single user of stainless steel. Steel is received in 16,000 pound coils and transferred by overhead cranes from storage racks to the feed mechanism for the large transfer presses where the upper and lower carriers and retainers are made. The 122,000 square foot press bay is all new construction added to an already existing 551,000 square feet portion reassigned to AC for the catalytic converter project. The ACMO press bay rests on 318 concrete and steel caissons anchored to bedrock. The huge cellar underneath permits stainless steel scrap resulting from the pressing of converter parts to be carried off to a baler house where it's packaged for return to the steel companies and eventual recycling. Each of these 1,800 ton presses weighs in at a million 300,000 pounds and it's 35 feet from the top of the press to the floor. The press carriers and retainers are shoveled into large industrial washers where the paraffin-based water-soluble lubricant employed in the press operation is removed. This is necessary for a series of critical welding operations which will take place later. The catalytic converter must be airtight.
The carriers and retainers are then transported by conveyors into Building 2, which formerly housed more than four and a half miles of office cubicles and laboratories for the space program. After these were removed, six assembly lines, each almost 700 feet long, were constructed. Each assembly line is divided into three major sections. All six lines are almost identical in the first two sections. On the larger converter, our Model 260, four stainless steel studs and washers hold the top and bottom pairs of carriers and retainers together. Reinforcing channels are placed under the lowered louvered retainer for extra strength. Converter shells move to electron beam welders on each of the six assembly lines where the 45-inch flange perimeter is welded tight, completing the seal between the upper and lower components. The electron beam welder rooms are shielded with lead plate and monitored regularly for excessive radiation. The catalyst fill machines load each completed shell with beads or extrudates while the shell is vibrated to aid the filling process. The catalyst fill plug, coated with an anti-seize compound, is started by hand to ensure proper threading. Each filler plug is torqued automatically according to AC and General Motors specifications. Proper torque application is monitored constantly by this torque meter to ensure that the plug remains threaded in place until such time as removal is necessary. More than 500 machines, ranging from bench size equipment to the massive 1,800-ton presses, were installed at ACMO in little more than a year's time as AC spark plug division prepared the site for catalytic converter production. Visual checks for quality of welds and other phases of workmanship supplement the sophisticated quality control machines employed in the manufacture of catalytic converters at AC Milwaukee operations. A layer of ceramic fiber insulation and an insulator cover for both the top and the bottom of the converter is provided this prevents excessive heat from being radiated into the passenger compartment of the car or to the road below. These are tack welded to the previously assembled shells. Modern welding technology is again employed to weld stainless steel inlet and outlet tubes at both ends of the assembled converter. A variety of flanges, pipes, and other fittings are fitted and welded to the converter to adapt them to various models of GM cars and light trucks. A percentage of each day's production is sampled and placed in special test stands developed by AC. Carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons are pumped into the test converters to audit their reliability and conversion efficiency. A high-speed computer operation housed in a special room near the test stands furnishes a reading on the converters being tested. Completely assembled catalytic converters are placed in GM returnable containers prior to shipment to Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, and Chevrolet and GMC light truck assembly plants. The catalytic converters are standard on all GM cars, as well as Chevrolet and GMC light trucks under 6,001 pounds gross vehicle weight. Each model 260 catalytic converter, depending on the types of fittings required for application, weighs about 30 pounds. Approximately 0.05 troy ounces of platinum palladium catalyst coats the more than 150,000 beads contained in each 260-inch converter. The smaller model 160 holds 160 cubic inches of catalyst. The bulk of AC Milwaukee operations catalytic converter production is shipped to GM assembly plants all over the country by rail. The basket-like returnable containers are brought back to the plant and reloaded with subsequent shipments. Our 1975 General Motors cars, certified by the Environmental Protection Agency, emit less than 1.5 grams of hydrocarbons per mile, 15 grams per mile carbon monoxide, and 3.1 grams per mile oxides of nitrogen. These figures represent a 90% reduction in hydrocarbons, 83% reduction in carbon monoxide, and a 38% reduction in oxides of nitrogen from the pre-controlled cars. These levels have been achieved through the application of several new emissions controls in addition to the AC catalytic converter. They include an electronic high-energy ignition system, early fuel evaporation, improved carburation, and special warm-up controls. The catalytic converter is an exhaust after-treatment device doing its work after combustion has taken place in the engine cylinders. 
As demonstrated here by AC's chief engineer, Tom Houston, it serves as a kind of septic tank to treat exhaust pollutants. GM car engines have been re-timed and recalibrated, offering an average of 13 to 15 percent more miles per gallon because the converter does its work so well. Better drivability and easier starting result also. Use of unleaded fuel in catalyst-equipped cars results in reduced lead particulate in the atmosphere, lower engine deterioration rates, improved spark plug life, now extended from 12,000 to 22,500 miles, increased oil change interval from 6,000 to 7,500 miles, and longer exhaust system life. Whereas the owner's manual for a typical 1954 GM car called for 49 dealer service checks in 50,000 miles, today's model requires only four. Started by the push of a legislative pen, the development of GM's catalytic converter set off a five-year landslide of worldwide activity. It's a story of what can be done and what can happen when you try to compress the time span of technological progress. In making its decisions for the type of emissions control technology to meet legislated standards, General Motors had to consider vehicle performance as well as cost. General Motors passenger cars offer an unprecedented range of choices in vehicles engineered for greater value. They are cleaner and leaner, answering the twin environmental challenges of our time for cleaner air and energy conservation. Pound for pound, there is so much more value in our cars. At AC Spark Plug Division, we're very proud of the important role that we played in achieving this goal.